Hey, what is up guys, it's Larry with Financial Lift, and today we're gonna to be talking about ways to improve your credit score. So a credit score is really important for personal finance because it can affect things like mortgages, credit card applications, um, even job applications, and sometimes phone companies and apartment complexes care about it. You know, you think about a mortgage, if you have a higher interest rate because you have a bad credit score, you're gonna end up paying thousands of dollars over the course of that loan. So there is a financial impact to having a bad credit score. Even credit card applications, if you're looking to get those premium credit cards that give you the best reward points or sign up bonuses, you need to have a stable and good credit score to have access to those good credit cards. Unfortunately, I think it's one of those topics that people don't necessarily feel comfortable talking about, which I think is kind of a shame because you can learn a lot from people's mistakes but hopefully I can give a few ideas on how to improve your credit score in this video. So probably the first tip I'd give anybody that's trying to improve their credit score is to be patient and take your time with it. You know, I see people that try to rush improving their credit score and they end up taking shortcuts that don't necessarily benefit you in the long run or they end up getting scammed because they see this website that claims to improve your credit score in 30 days by 200 points or something like that. You know, you're not going to be able to improve your credit score in 30 days when you've been hurting your credit score over the past five years and think that you can overcome those mistakes over the past five years in 30 days based on this new program you see out there. So just realize it is going to be kind of a process, but it's not necessarily going to take years and years to improve your credit score. You know, there are things you can build right now that will drastically improve your credit score. Just realize that you need to be patient and you will get to that good credit score if it's something you care about. That kind of brings me to my next tip, which is to track your credit score. There are plenty of free services out there and there are some paid services out there. I don't necessarily use a paid service because there are plenty of really good free services out there. You know, there's Credit Karma, which a lot of people advocate for. I use that. There are some people that are strongly against it because they say that, you know, their real credit score versus what Credit Karma was reporting, there's a 50 point difference or a 100 point difference. And that may be true for certain people, but I think it never actually hurts you to use Credit Karma or a service like it because it's better to track it than just to assume what your credit score is and not know about what's impacting it. Another option is a lot of banks or credit cards actually have a free service built into their service that you can use to track your credit score. Chase offers a good one, American Express offers one. So that may be something worth looking into if you have an account with them or really any credit card company or even some bank account will offer something like that. So there are other services that may be even more reliable that are more accurate. Another option is actually to go directly to one of the three major credit bureaus and request your credit score or credit report and it will actually detail out there what's impacting it, what lines of credit you have, how long it's been open, um, how many accounts that you have, and if there's any kind of derogatory remarks what they call. So things like where you file for bankruptcy or stuff like that or if you have something that became delinquent those remarks would be on that full credit report. So something you can actually do is stagger how you request a free credit report from these three different credit card bureaus. So you can actually request one um, per year for free for each credit card bureau. So then you basically get a full year's picture without having to pay for a premium service where you're having to pay a fee to get full access to that credit report. So definitely something worth looking into. So to kind of go along with that is to review the credit report in detail. So make sure that you understand every credit line that's on your name. So make sure that there's nothing fraudulent. Sometimes you can see an account that you're unaware of that you that somebody else may have opened. And if that's the case, you need to handle that. It may be the case that you have a credit card that you were unaware of because you forgot about it because you thought you know, you close it years ago, but you actually had a $30 bounce on it and it's been accruing interest. So reviewing that credit report actually helps a lot because you can avoid that. You know, if I know every credit line of credit that's open in my name, then it's less likely that I'm going to forget to pay a certain credit card bill or statement or that there's going to be fraudulent activity that's negatively impacting my credit score. So definitely review that credit report because it tells you a lot of good information on there. So now to kind of dig into things that actually impact your credit score and ways to improve it. Uh, paying on time is probably one of the biggest ones that 
you know, hurts a lot of people when they miss a payment. But at the same time, it's one of those things that is super important to maintain a good credit score. So one of the biggest reasons that I feel like people end up missing payments is because they just don't end up setting auto pay or they don't have the funds available for that. So if you don't have the funds available, you know, the first thing I would probably start with is you need to get your finances in order, which, you know, you should start budgeting and tracking your expenses and you know, managing that before you can handle that situation as far as having those late payments. But even then, I would still say you have to figure out a way to pay it on time because, you know, anytime you miss a payment, you're gonna get hit with the late fee as well as the interest charge. And sometimes on top of that, you get an interest rate increase. And then on top of that, it negatively impacts your credit score. So it kind of ends up hitting you four different ways, which kind of is a big deal. So what I recommend is making sure that anytime you buy something on a line of credit, especially a credit card, make sure that you're able to pay it off right away. If you have to, then you know manually pay it off right away. As soon as you go out there to buy something, manually pay it. But what I would at least recommend at a minimum is to anytime you get a new credit card or some type of line of credit, set up auto pay as soon as you can. I know there's a lot of people out there that they like to manually pay their credit cards or their statements because they kind of want to make sure that they review the statement before they end up, you know, giving the funds over, which I can understand that. But at the same time, that doesn't necessarily mean you have to forego not having auto pay because you can have auto pay and still review the statement and even if you want you can still manually pay it before the auto payment clears so that's just something i would recommend is making sure you end up setting auto pay and paying those things on time because it's super important and even if you've ha- missed payments in the past it's still a good idea to start building that credit history now and just making sure you pay everything on time going forward. So the next thing that would impact your credit score and ways to improve it is your utilization rate. So basically what that means, it's kind of your ratio between your total available line of credit versus your outstanding balance. So for example, if I have a credit card that has a $10,000 limit, but I have an outstanding balance of $2,000 on there, well, that's a 20% utilization rate, which is pretty decent. But if I end up having a $3,000 credit limit on that same credit card with a $2,000 outstanding balance, well, now my utilization rate is about 66%, which for credit card bureaus, they kind of view that as risky because when you're pushing up against that credit limit, they kind of think, well, there's a reason why you know you're, you're trying to maximize your credit. And so they kind of view that as more risky. So if you could get that down, you know, 10% is kind of a good range to get to. And so some of the ways you can actually improve it depending on your situation is you could call up some of these credit card companies and ask them to extend your your line of credit. So that's kind of a simple trick to do. They're not necessarily going to extend that line of credit if, you know, you have a bad credit score. But if you have a long history, you know, like, for example, if you have an account with American Express for five years, maybe you don't necessarily have, you know, an 800 credit score but maybe you're in that 700 range or maybe you're just in a situation where you can at least just call them. I mean, it never hurts to ask and just say, hey, is there any way you can increase my um, line of credit for this credit card? And if they do, well, that will actually improve your credit or your utilization rate without actually even having to do anything as far as paying down the debt. But I definitely do recommend, you know, always pay off the statement balance just because of like what I explained before. You're getting hit with a late fee or even if you're paying on time and you're not paying that full outstanding balance, well, you're still getting that interest rate charge, which is, you know, astronomical when it comes to credit cards. So definitely utilization rate is one of those things. It it really majorly impacts your credit score. So another thing that impacts credit scores is your average length of history. So for example, if you have uh, one credit card and you only happen to have it open for one year versus somebody else who has a credit card that's been open for 10 years, well, credit bureaus view that as more favorable when you have it for 10 years. So the reason for that is just because if you're opening up a whole bunch of credit cards, well, then your average history actually ends up going down. So for example, if I have two credit cards and I have one that's been open for 10 years, well, the moment I open up that second one, then my average history goes down to five years. So one thing that I would recommend is trying to stabilize that average history. And one way to do that is to have multiple credit cards 
that have a long history. So if I have three credit cards that have been open for 10 years, and then I open up a fourth one, well, now my average life is about seven and a half years, which isn't as big of an impact as when I only had two credit cards. So I definitely recommend trying to have a couple of credit cards, but at the same time, keep in mind that in the short term, when you open up multiple credit cards, that's gonna negatively impact your credit score. So that's something you wanna keep in mind when you're thinking about credit scores and if you're gonna necessarily need that good credit score in the short term or in the long term. So to kinda of go along with that point, I'd also really stray away from frivolously closing credit cards. So I see this a lot in personal finance books or you know, finance talk shows that will just kinda of say, you know, all this credit card debt, cut up your credit cards and cancel your credit cards right away, which you know, is not really the thing I would recommend. I can understand the premise of it and I can understand why people recommend it. But what I would kind of recommend is kind of having it both ways. So why not just keep the credit card account open so that way you have a, you know, you're building that average history life. But at the same time, cut up those credit cards, make sure you don't request a new one. So that way you kind of remove that temptation to build more debt, but you still keep that credit card account open. You know, and then on top of that, there's a lot of people out there that think, you know, that just by cutting up your credit card and trying to close your account, that that balance you still owe is just gonna kinda go away. But that's a huge mistake because that will negatively impact your credit score, which maybe right now you don't necessarily care about, but down the road, if you try to get a house or anything like that, or even a car, uh, you will care about that credit score because you're gonna end up having a higher interest rate and that's gonna end up being more money uh, out of your pocket because you're paying that higher interest rate. So that's pretty much it. I mean, that is a very high level and quick and easy version of, you know, things to care about as far as when you're talking about credit scores. There's a lot of different nuances to credit scores, but that's just kind of a high level overview. If, you know, you don't fully understand everything yet, then I definitely don't recommend, you know, jumping, you know, head first into all of this. You know, there's people out there that they get a basic kind of understanding of credit scores, and then they'll go out there and open three or five credit cards out there, or they'll think they'll know how to kind of game the system to best get credit card points, which there are ways to do that with maintaining a good credit score, but there are people that just kind of get way over their head because they haven't done the research, but they just kind of see this opportunity out there. And so they just kind of jump on the opportunity without fully understanding the details. So take your time. Credit scores are kind of a complicated mess, but it's once you kind of break it down, it's not as hard as you think.